Hi everyone, my name is Ira Fay, and I'm going to review this game from the 2021 War of the Ring tournament. This is round one, game two, and I am playing Shadow. Uh, this is the beginning of the game. I've turned on the hands for everybody to see what we have here. I started with Palantir and Many Kings, and Free started with Thrandall's Archers, and there's another way. These are reasonable rolls. I only, I rolled one eye, and unfortunately didn't get a second muster to get Saruman, but I did start with the Palantir, which I'm excited about because I have all these Palantir dice. I'm going to realize later in the round that I can't actually play this because it requires Saruman in play. So... Let's see how it started off. The first thing that Free does is move, and uh, I miss with a five, and that is fine. I think that it would probably, this is very minor, but I think it would probably make sense to use the Palantir before moving, so that in case I happen to roll a six, and I happen to draw a three, and you wanna lose Gandalf right away, that, um, or two reveal maybe, um, that you'll get the extra card draw from Gandalf's ability. So, I, you know, maybe it makes sense to delay it a little bit so that Shadow is a little surprised about the fact that there's a reinforcement in, in Woodland Realm. But I don't know. I think the benefit is probably worth it to, to draw the card early. Okay, so a movement. It's safe. And uh, let's continue on. I muster Isengard. That makes sense. And um, another, safe, another safe movement by the, by the free people. And I go ahead and start my armies moving along. He passes. I try and pay, play the Palantir and realize it's illegal because I don't have Saruman in play. And um, go ahead and decide to draw a strategy card. Now, maybe it makes sense to draw character cards early in the game. Um, I, I don't know. I kind of feel like the Fellowship is not unlikely to be revealed um better to draw some early muster cards that can perhaps get my military going since it's otherwise going to be a little bit slow i don't draw anything particularly playable there but then i get new powers rising also requires saruman in play but certainly a great card to have early on he then plays thrandall's archer so maybe i'm thinking a little less excited to go towards uh the north but it's still probably my best bet even with that one reinforcement and he gets two great muster cards and I go ahead and play many kings because what else am I going to do with that palantir? I, I don't really want to drop to five because I don't have to discard cards. And, and that's nice to be able to reinforce these locations early on. Now I'm going to have 10 units in the, in the, uh, in the north from, from these guys. I, I need to get them to war, but eventually that'll happen. All right, he goes ahead and moves again, and the Fellowship gets three safe movements, which is a nice start for the Fellowship. We go ahead and draw cards again. We're all we're, we're both drawing nice cards, uh, perfectly happy with uh, an early foul thing and Rage of the Dunlings. I, I'm obviously um, going to be hoping that I get enough musters to get Saruman because I have two cards, both the Palantir and New Powers Rising that I really would like to play that requires Saruman in play. Okay, so he starts off another good uh, three, three movement for him, and I have um, a nice amount of musters. I'm not going to be able to get the Witch King right away, but still it's good to get Saruman. So I miss him on the hunt, and I go ahead and get Saruman. There's no real chance that he can get Gandalf because he didn't draw a Will of the West. If he uses, a, it's theoretically possible with um, Mirror of Galadriel, but it would require a ring, so I'm not, I'm not really worried about that. Go ahead and get Saruman now. It doesn't reveal any of my plans, and I still keep my options open for where I'm going to attack. So power too great. I think I think that makes sense. Why not? He had five cards in hand, so he has to play something. Um, makes sense. Why not? Gets the elves into war. It, maybe it makes sense to to save it a little bit more. You could potentially just muster them normally with that, and then save power too great. But I don't know what else. What else can you do here? 
I don't know, maybe King Brand's men to, um, to redraw, maybe Riders of Theoden. If you get an early Riders of Theoden, then you can put two units in Edoras. You'll have um, like a nice army in Edoras. And then next time when you get an army muster, you can move that army to, to Westamnet. And, and defend Helm's Deep so that Helm's Deep doesn't end up falling with too few. Maybe I would have played Riders of Theoden before Power Too Great. Um, Power Too Great is a, a nice surprise once I start sort of marching toward um, Lorien or Rivendell. Um, given that he's played this now, I sort of think to myself, well, I haven't actually moved this Dol Guldur army anywhere yet. I I don't have any great mustard cards to go after Lorien right away. I'll just I'll just avoid that. Um, I'll go ahead and so right now I'm thinking I'm gonna continue up north. That's five points. I'm gonna take Rohan. That's three more points. And then for my final two points, I'll probably go for the two cities because I have Rage of the Dundalending, so I can get to the Shire pretty easily, and obviously I can take Pilar Gear. So that's sort of as of right now. That's my that's my plan. And. I guess if he had held a power too great a little bit longer and instead got Rohan a little bit more defended, that would have that would have affected my plans. It, power too great would have been more of a thorn in my side. Seeing it, seeing where it is now, this early on, I can I can plan around it. And I do. Alright, so I go ahead and continue moving armies. Obviously this army can't uh, attack yet, but I can start getting this army moving up north. Alright, some more army movement. I collect my armies down here. Um, all right, I have to think about what, uh, where to move. I go ahead and I go ahead and get close to Pilar Gear because they're not at war. It's possible free can be slightly annoying by blocking that spot if, um, if the South Rounds and Eastern is at war. I don't have Corsairs of Umbar, and my plan is not to take Dol Amroth. I don't really need it because I'm planning on taking these. Um, yeah, m maybe it, maybe it'd be worth it to to delay, but. That's my, my current plan. All right, so he goes ahead and he meant to separate uh, Strider there. So he separates Strider. I think that does not make a lot of sense. Um, you know, the Fellowship has a lot of people in it. I, I realize, you know, you, you, can get, you can get to Minas Tirith, um, but you don't have a Will of the West right now. And you're not guaranteed to roll a Will of the West. And those are two movements that, I mean, I only have two dice. I don't have any re-rolls. Maybe I'll hit you, maybe I won't. But I, you don't have, any, you're at four movement. You've had no corruption from the Fellowship. Um, you wouldn't really mind losing Gandalf here. So I would definitely, I, I would not have separated Strider here. Um... I, I would have just moved twice. And if you get if you get hit, if you get hit then and get revealed, then fine, you lose Gandalf um, and then hide with your second die. And now you're at five movement instead of six. Um, I just don't think it makes sense to pull to pull Strider out here. Um, all right, so but he moves he, he pulls out Strider um, and then he moves Strider. So yeah, I, I, yeah, I just don't, I don't understand. I don't understand that. I think if you get, if you get one more movement, then you can declare into Part Celebrant. Then a single die can can get you to Miss uh, Minas Tirith. I think if you, I think that would this move would make sense if you had a Will of the West. If you knew you had a Will of the West and you were investing some dice now to be able to get more dice later, then that's great. But I think without a Will of the West, that just that's just really a potentially waste of, of two movement dice that you could have moved to just get the Fellowship running. Also, I think if the Fellowship had been higher on corruption and you wanted to take it slow so that you weren't risking more corruption, then also I would I would consider a move like this to try and invest in more dice and have more military presence. But the Fellowship was 100% healthy, so I would just, I would just run. Okay. Um, I now play the Palantir. I could move, I could move these guys, but now that I see he has Air, uh, Strider here waiting for a Will of the West, um, playing the Palantir is much tastier because he's less likely to roll two Wills of the West and he'll have to spend a ring to get rid of the Palantir. Um, or he'll have to decide between getting Aragorn or getting rid of the Palantir. And obviously 
um, you know, I think you would get Aragorn. So, so it's more likely that this is going to stick around longer, and that's why I play it. Maybe it's worth it to rush this army, but I'm I'm far enough away. Um, I, I'm interested in playing Pountier. I, I hate wasting having to discard cards, so that puts me at the right number of cards in my hand. All right, so we continue. Um, let's see. He gets oh he gets Athelos right there after. Um, after just getting rid of just getting rid of Strider, so that's a little bit um, that's a little bit bad timing. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm happy. I, I draw Corsairs of Umbar. That's a little ironic after having just moved these armies uh, to the north of Umbar. But okay. So um, I allocate one eye and only roll one. I get one more muster, and he does not get any will of the west. So. You know, this is, I think this is the real risk of, of that play. Um, so, and only one movement. So the fellowship is slowing down now and he could have, could have been farther along. Yeah, this is, this is a pretty bad role for him to not get any wills of the West. You know, you have about a 50% chance, maybe a little better than a 50% chance, something like that. Okay. Um, so he goes ahead and moves. Um, I missed the fellowship continues to be, uh, safe and, um, I go ahead and play New Powers Rising. He doesn't have Gandalf in play, so I'm not really worried about um, the Ents. And he musters uh, Gondor Tordor. I think that's fine. That makes sense. I mean, the other thing to possibly consider is mustering the Elves Tordor. Um, it would let me get uh, the Witch King this turn. So, you know, may maybe it makes sense not, not to do that. But he sees that this army is coming toward Woodland Realm, but it's, it's probably too late. Um, he's not going to be able to reinforce Woodland Realm further. Does he have scouts yet? He doesn't have any scouts. Um, he doesn't really have any easy way to move these armies into Old Forest Road here either way. So um, no real rush in that. Um, all right, so Gondor, I think that probably makes sense. He wants to make sure Aragorn stays alive. I start... Um, I, I want to start attacking into Fords of Eisen. I do the calculation that if I muster this up... I can attack three times with these three sword dice um, and then get get the Witch King at the end of this turn because Rohan will be at war. It's a little bit of a risk because then um, he can start to muster up an Edoras, but I'm, I'm excited to get the Witch King if I can. Also, it was it was a little sad. Did I did I draw did I roll any um, Palantirs? He he didn't get rid of he didn't get rid of the um, the the Palantir of Orthanc, but um ah i did i did get one palantir so i i should have commented on that um i play a new power is rising and then i get to draw a new card so i don't know maybe with only one palantir it's not worth it to get rid of it um but i probably i probably would have I, I should have commented on that. I probably would have gotten rid of that earlier. He didn't have any dice that were so amazing that he was like so urgent to use right now that would have been such a pain to use it. It does give me a ring. Maybe he's hoping to roll two Wills of the West next turn, but given that he still didn't get Aragorn, I would, yeah, my, my inclination is to, to have gotten rid of the Palantir this round for, for one ring, and then I don't get to draw any extra cards. All right, so um, I go ahead and attack Fords of Eisen. I play Great Host hoping that he doesn't have scouts. He doesn't have scouts, and I manage to inflict enough casualties to take out Fords of Eisen. Obviously, this is really bad. Um, and you know what? If he had if he had mustered here all that time ago with Riders Theoden, and then had some, he wouldn't have even been able to get them into Helm's Deep. So, um, you know, this this is a risk of not having. Uh, not having Gandalf early, I think that's another reason I probably would have tried to get Gandalf early. Then it it, it makes it makes this less likely. All right, so um, I go ahead and attack Helm's Deep. He goes into siege. He moves the Fellowship, and this time I finally hit him, and I get an eye, which is a little bit of bad luck. He has six movement. Um, I think it makes sense for him to go through Mori at this point because he's doing well. He takes the one corruption and then we draw the three and Gandalf goes. So, so that's nice. Um, and now at this point, I'm thinking uh, Gandalf could show up first action next round. Then I could play um, one muster and get a single elite in there. But that's um, that's not enough to defend against an end. It would really be a shame to lose Saruman this early in the game. 
So that's why I uh, abort my plan to get uh, Rohan to war. Um, and I also didn't want him doing extra mustering in in Edoras before I had a chance to, to really take this army quickly um, to Edoras. So that's why I'm delaying a turn for the Witch King. It's it's a little bit of a shame, but I don't want to I don't want to risk losing Saruman. All right, so he thinks about playing uh, Celeborn, but instead he plays Riders, which I think is definitely correct. Um, you can tell that I'm trying to take over Rohan, so uh, it makes sense to muster up Rohan as much as possible. Uh, and then I fight Helm's Deep now anyway, putting Rohan at war, because I, I don't actually have uh, an, elite, an elite unit in... Um, to, to muster into Orthanc. So my thinking is he's going to muster Gandalf at the beginning of next turn into Fangorn. I better be ready to muster a second elite in Orthanc. Then I'm up to four hit points. Then he has to have two ends to be able to defeat me. And that's, it's much less likely. So that's why um, I want to do this attack now. And then hopefully after this attack and I'll succeed, then I will, and I'll be able to take at least one casualty and have an elite. Then I'll be able to m march on to, um, Edoras as soon as possible, and the other, um, and the other option is um, going to be to bring this army in Dol Guldur down to reinforce Rohan if I need to. So I think that that this stack of ten and this stack of ten is going to be enough to defeat Do up north, and then if I need to, I can reinforce. So that's that's my current plan. All right, so I managed to take exactly one hit, uh, which is what I wanted, so that I have an elite and uh, capture Helm's Deep. So he has to discard. Um, I had to discard Flocks of Curbain. That's fine. I don't really miss that. Um, I'm not really worried about the Fellowship. I'm just trying to race and and capture this up here, and then these, um, and then the four cities. So that's my plan. And he gets uh, Will of the West, which is great. Um, obviously, it would have been better to get two. Um, and he hides the Fellowship first. I think that's fine. Um, that gives me a chance to play Foul Thing um, to reveal them again. Uh, and that's, of course, the issue with not having Strider in there. Uh, it makes it um, you know, harder to hide. The Fellowship's going to be slowed down quite a bit. Maybe the Fellowship is getting close enough. I should start to be thinking about getting... Um, Getting character cards to try and draw cruel weather, um, but I still think I'm I'm ahead I'm ahead in this in this race. I'm continuing to draw cards from the palantir, so I think again with two palantirs that I've rolled, it really feels like it'd be worth a ring to get rid of um, the palantir now. Um, so, yeah, I do miss with Falthing. That's you know that happens sometimes. He gets Gandalf, and then I go ahead and muster my elite. Um, because he gave me a ring, I don't remember exactly where the ring happened. Um, because he gave me the ring, I have the freedom to muster here and also still get the Witch King this turn. Um, I can't remember exactly why why he played a ring earlier, but, but that's a good reason to try and save rings. Um, all right, so um, we go ahead and move... Uh, armies. I'm going to try and take out Edoras before he gets more mustering. So my plan is to put an army into fold and then go ahead and take this. It seems unlikely that he's going to be able to hold Edoras against that army. Um, I go ahead and get the Witch King because why not? Um, he gets King Brandsman. That's that's a good defense. Um, and now he finally draws scouts. I play Black Captain Commands to keep things moving along and to um, get more Nazgul in play. I'm still not too worried about hunting the Fellowship. And I go ahead and surround Edoras, keep my armies moving, and he um, moves the Fellowship, which is obviously correct, and they're safe. I go ahead and take out Edoras. Um, that's a fairly straight, straightforward battle. Um, I was a little worried about Ents for the battle effect. Um, maybe I should have played... Um, Deadly Strife on the first round of combat because I had more leadership at that point, but... Um, I went ahead and, and did it this way. It's it probably a slight inaccuracy. Um, okay, so he... Um, I have to discard some cards. Uh, he had to discard some cards also. I think it's... Uh, I don't know exactly what you would discard here, looking at this. Um, I, you know, I really like the, the combat cards. I mean, these are a lot of good cards. 
Uh, you can think about what you would discard. I ended up discarding Breaking Fellowship. Um, I think it's relatively unlikely to do a bunch of corruption damage. Um, you know, it does draw an extra tile, which is always good. Um, but I'm, I'm sort of really trying to focus on military and just race the, race the fellowship. Maybe I should have saved it to cycle as a, as a character card to get deeper into the deck to try and draw, um, cruel weather. All right. So, um, he again does not get a bunch of movement here. That's, uh, obviously a bit of a shame, um, and does not get another will of the West. That's really, that's really quite unlucky. Um, he gets Gondor to war. That seems fine. Um, Seems reasonable to start to maybe be able to prepare a counterattack. Um, I have the Palantir, so I'm just going to play all my Palantir dice. Again, uh, better to get rid of the Palantir, for sure. I mean, I'm drawing I'm drawing a lot of cards from this. Um, he tries to play certain ships, but can't, um, and then gives me a ring to uh, get rid of the Palantir finally. I, I, think, I think that makes sense. Um, I probably would have done that sooner. I go ahead and start getting the Southrons and Easterlings to war. Um, I play Ring Wraiths are abroad to go ahead and put somebody on the Fellowship, why not, and um, attack Rivendell, he did, uh, uh, Woodland Realm. He didn't realize that um, that was possible because of Power to Great, just forgot that, I guess, for a second. Um, but obviously that's that's a very important part of that card. Um, Woodland Realm is not protected, so you can still attack that. And that is obviously, a, a, tends to be a good early target because it's hard to, it's just hard to reinforce it. All right, um, elves are getting towards war. Um, I I just go ahead and attack Woodland Realm. Um, this is a fairly standard combat. I don't press. I don't feel like I'm in that much rush. He plays Bilbo's song here. I think that's okay, um, but it does it does cost you. Um, it's like an opportunity cost of one corruption. But I guess he's not really he's not really in a rush. Um, I don't know. Um, and he did have one end. So, yeah, I don't know exactly what else what else to do here. Um, yeah, maybe Emerhill of Dol Amroth. Okay, um, I go ahead and reinforce this because I still have um, I still have too many cards in hand, and I want to be able to play Devilry of Orthanc to cycle it, and I just I want to make sure I can I can take out this whole this whole um, area. He moves the Fellowship. I managed to hit him and reveal him, so the Fellowship is uh, slowing down. I think about Morgul Wound, but I'm thinking, you know, he has so many fellowship, so many companions in the Fellowship, I don't think it makes sense to play it now. Um, so I'm just not going to waste my time with it, and um, I think instead I'm just going to keep attacking. So I, I make some progress attacking. The Fellowship is getting close enough. Maybe I should have cycled um, Morgul Wound at this point, but... Um, I go ahead and take out Woodland Realm. Um, he plays certain ships onto Dol Amroth. Yeah, I mean, I'm not, I'm not really going for Dol Amroth, so I don't know that that makes a lot of sense. And especially if you have mustering ability, I would just probably muster Gondorian units in there. Um, and I'd probably be mustering into Pelargir at this point. Um, certainly a regular in Pelargir. That's eventually going to get attacked, so why not try and buff it up some? Um, okay. And then I I I move um, to Wither Heath because I don't want to provoke I don't want to provoke this giant army in Dale and let him use scouts to get into Erebor. So I'm gonna I'm gonna attack Erebor and then I'm gonna bring this army in and then I'm gonna take out Dale in the, in the very end. So I'm just executing my plan of these five points, these three points, one here and one here. Um, okay, so uh, I roll. Um, let's see. He he gets some good movement here. Um, and I happen to draw Cruel Weather. So obviously that's just that's just good luck. Um, I don't think it would have mattered that much either way, um, but but obviously that's that's quite good. And um, he uh, gets Aragorn finally, that makes sense. You know, maybe it's worth it to think about rushing the Fellowship, but he has enough uh, to probably make it either way. Um, I attack Erebor, he goes into a siege. I think that makes sense. Um, he moves the fellowship. Um, oh, he hides the fellowship. Sorry. Um, I go ahead and attack into Iron Hills first because I think it makes sense. Uh, I don't want that guy being at war and then him mustering it up. He moves the fellowship safely. I use Rage of the Dunlundings. I'm not sure why. Oh, I do it now because I can only move in four units. 
And so I'm going to have two left over and I have this extra army movement that I'm going to go ahead and get those in that way. So I um, do the Rage of the Dunderlings first. This is another great thing about Rage of the Dunderlings. It gives you army movement from a muster die. So otherwise this ends up being kind of a useless die. Um, later in the game and Rage of the Dunlandings let you lets you get movement out of muster. So that's a really nice thing about that card. Um, okay, he goes ahead and um, sees that I'm preparing to attack the Shire and starts to try and get those guys in, but I don't know that that's going to be enough for um, four hit points against seven hit points. It's not going to be enough, especially because I'm going to bring Nazgul in. But you know why not? It, it, it's not a it's not a bad use of that. Um, Okay, I um, attack Erebor first because I want to make this army a little smaller so that I can move in more units. You know, uh, it, maybe if I'm going to end up doing this attack anyway before having moved in this army, maybe I shouldn't have wasted all the time to move that army in. Um, but I don't want to. I don't want to risk a counterattack, um, and I'm going to need more units anyway, probably to be able to take out Dale. So that's that's my thinking. I go ahead and play Deadly Strife because I can only take three, um, and we end up doing we end up you know doing a fairly fairly standard uh, combat. Um, and then I move my army units. I merge this army. I merge this army. Um, it's looking it's looking pretty good for a shadow at this point. Um, I go ahead and defeat uh, Erebor, and he moves again, um, and uh, I miss, and then I play for weather. So, you know, that's that's bad luck. He probably, there, there's nothing he could do about that. He obviously should try and get in. Um, you know, I think earlier in the game, if he had, if he, instead of separating Strider, if he had just been moving, um, he would have been able to make it in sooner. So I think that's a good lesson in just being careful about when, when to separate Strider. All right, so he doesn't make it in, and then in the last round of the game, uh, he he has this pretty bad roll. He can't even get he can't even get these armies in, um, and he's already used up all of his rings, um, and so and I and I just roll uh, plenty of plenty of movement. There's really there's really nothing. I don't think there's anything he can do here. Um, I, I take out um, Pilar gear, and. Um, you know, I don't think this army is big enough to to recapture Pilar gear. And on top of that, I have um, the shadow is moving, so I can get these armies into Pilar gear to reinforce it even more. Um, there's just uh, I I think it's pretty pretty hopeless at this point. Um, so I take out Dale. Um, he thinks about moving them. I don't know. Maybe it makes sense to retreat them and then try and attack back into uh, Woodland Realm and it will waste an extra attack from me because I don't have to kick them out of wherever they're besieging. Um, but, oh, they wouldn't have even been at war. So, um, yeah, they wouldn't have even been at war. I, I, yeah, he's he's just uh, there's just there's just nothing that he can he can really be doing here. Um, he stays in fights, but um, obviously they get defeated in the end. Um, he musters once in um, the Shire, but uh, these guys can can take it out, um, and uh, that's that's really the that's really the end. Uh, I, I defeat the Shire, and then um, he just moves once to get to get the Fellowship into Mordor because he knows there's there's just no real chance uh, against against this, and 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 that's the game. So this was an example of just a quick, a quick shadow, quick shadow military victory, and um, uh, I guess uh, not not rolling wills of the west as uh, free people when when you needed them, and letting the palantir sit on the board a little too long. Uh, let's show the statistics. Here are the statistics. I obviously rolled. Um, quite well to not to not roll too many eyes. If you're trying to roll a rush strategy, then rolling very few eyes is very effective. And event you know, he he's he rolled on average enough wills, but it was um they were really spaced out poorly. He got he got a bunch when he didn't really need them. There's the game.